Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you once again for joining us on the show. Let me go ahead and share this real quick with, um, you know, other platforms and things like that. There's so much going on, ladies and gentlemen, so much going on. Um, but today is Wednesday, midweek, you know, and don't have that long for, you know, those of you who work five days a week. You know, speaking about working five days a week, I, I heard there was a bill trying to get put up in Congress where you will work 32 hours a week for the same pay. Um, I think I actually, I actually do support that. Let me tell you why. How is it that you work five days, five? and you get no day off during the week, let's say the traditional Monday through Friday, nine to five, right? You get no day off during the week to, to do something maybe, uh, unless you have to do it after work, or you have to take off and burn a sick day or vacation day or something like that. But I think three days off is a lot better than two, because you work all week, you get up all freaking week. Monday through Friday, right? Saturday go by so fast. Sunday go by so fast. And then you right back at that job again. So think about it. If you look at four weeks, four weeks out of a month, you only had eight days off out of four weeks. Versus, I think the three day schedule, let's say if y'all Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right? Or I know like, let's say a place got to be covered on a Friday. So let's say you off Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. It would probably be either or, right? Either Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, just so they can make sure Friday is covered. So you can do your 32 hours. Um, I think that's just better for society. I agree with that. I think it's better for the country, personally. Um, you have to understand though, there are some people that have opposition to it, but why? They say, oh, it's going to drive up employee costs. No, I mean, employer costs. No, it's not. It's not going to drive up anything. There's st you're still paying them the same 40 hours. You just have to shuffle around scheduling. So basically some people going to work Monday through Thursday. Some people going to work Tuesday through Friday. That's it really. I mean, you still got it covered. You'll close on the weekend anyway. Now I know I didn't really work on Monday through Friday too long in my life. I mostly was working. Oh, let me see all the schedules I've worked. I worked offshore before what I was working 20 days on 10 days off. I did that schedule. I never got to do 14 to seven though. Um, I've done four on and four off, um, straight nights or four on and four off before 12 hour shifts. So some people say four tens. No, what they're saying is, 32 hours, but you're paid like you work 40. That's what they are talking about. Anyway. Um, so I did four on four off. Then I remember I switched to four on four off, but rotating two weeks a day. So it'd be like five P five AM to five PM. And then on my nights, I was working five PM to five AM. Um, I've worked a DuPont schedule. That's that schedule where you got seven days off. In a, in a month, I worked that schedule. I worked the three, two schedule before, um, you know, where basically you have every other weekend, all three days. I worked that schedule It's uh, I worked so many schedules in my, my day. Let's, let's get to the, I ain't got started yet. And I'm about to start cooking. So let, let's get to this individual named Cadillac. And he say he's subscribed here because you couldn't be in the chat unless you subscribe. It says the black Republican feel. 
Okay. Let's go there. If I decided to become a black Republican, what are you going to do about it? If that's what I decided to do, what, what would you actually do about it? Not really much or nothing. If that's what I chose to do, you know, I have my ancestors fought for me to have a right to vote and I can exercise a right not to vote. If I would not like to vote, I can vote Democrat. I can vote Republican. I can vote green party. I can write my own name in. I can do whatever because I have a right to vote. I have an ID where I can actually vote. So calling me a Republican, what is, is that a diss or something? I'm trying to figure that out. Like, so I was supposed to coddle the Democrats after Joe Biden has let 7 million people in this country and my next live stream tomorrow, hopefully I get, yeah, should be tomorrow. I want you to, I want you to come back to the live stream tomorrow. And I want you to hear black people in Chicago, what they told Brandon Johnson. And then after that, you tell me about Republican at that point. You see, <laughs> like that doesn't work anymore. You can't shame us with anything. You can't, you can't ancestor shame us about voting. If we choose not to, you can't political party shame us if we choose to vote, whatever, you know, definitely if I want to vote Republican, I'm going to do it. I told you that if I want to, I'm going to do it. There's nothing you're going to do to stop me. I'm an independent. I've said that I'm, I'm definitely an independent, but I cannot go with Democrat. So either it's the couch for me at this stage of the game, it's going to be the couch or if I choose to, I vote for Trump. And once again, what are you going to do about it? It's my choice to vote. As long as they say that I am legally enabled to vote, then I will exercise my right or not exercise my right to vote. Yeah. And, and, and the killing part about it, let's talk about black Republican. Do you know more black people I'm meeting is talking about voting for Trump? It's not even about a Republican thing. It's about, they talking about voting for Trump. I'm meeting black men, black women saying they voting for Trump. Why the migrant crisis? Why the economy? That's really the two things that people are talking about right now. It's a migrant crisis in the, in the economy. So I guess we all going to be some black Republicans, I guess. Well, so I guess I'm a Republican cause I don't support foreign nationals taking resources from my community, even though I don't live in Chicago, but it's still my people. So that's still my community. I don't support that. So I, Okay. I, if that's the case and I'm a Republican, then whatever you want to call me, fine. I'll be that. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, just checking in with y'all real quick. You know, I just do a little preliminary with y'all just a little preliminary. Hey, if you feel like you want to sit on the couch, that's, that's your, that's your prerogative. Like Bobby Brown say your prerogative and, and, and that's your, that's your choice. All right. So, as you see on the screen down here, all around the world, the same song. Now, now we know um, that was one of the songs. Well, uh, that that's that title at least is something we was introduced to when we saw Tupac Shakur on uh, when he did his at least the first feature I seen him do before he became who he was and got it. Brenda's got a baby and all of that with Digital Underground with Shock G and all of them. Uh, definitely shout out to the families of, of, of Tupac Shakur, Shock G, cause Shock G passed away and all of that with digital underground. And I think that that particular all around the world, the same song fits this because all around the world, we keep hearing the same song when it comes to the folks. Yeah, uh, T say, I guess ignite. Yes. Yes. A black federal judge. You know, these federal judges that Boulay Martin always talk about federal judges. Well, see, we need federal judges. And I've heard she was an Obama appointed federal judge. Yes. She said that people who aren't legally here to be in the United States of America can have guns. Boy, I really see that working out very well in America, right? I told y'all that that party 
is, is, is so anti-American. Oh my God. Oh, that is a story for a different day. So I want to get to a, a, a video. We need to stay on topic here and we may circle back to some things, but let's stay on topic. This video is, is black people out of Australia. Now understand some Australia, if you know the history of that land, that land was full of black people, several, several tribes of black people in that land. There was not a European on that land prior to them coming there. If you hear the, if you know the atrocities, what happened to black folk in, 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 in Australia? Oh my God. Listen, you, you understand this world was a black planet. Literally. It's not nowhere on planet earth that we wasn't occupying. The greatest black people in the world right now is the black folks on North Sentinel Island. They the only black people that got it. They said, hey, now none of y'all coming over here. And that's why North and look, North Central Island is nowhere near Africa. Nowhere near it because out of the kind of Africa we explored everywhere. They, even the folks had to admit the first European was a person of African descent. We have been all over the world and even on this hemisphere, all up and down. We were traveling out of Africa way before Columbus and, and all of that. We, the, the Moors knew the shipping routes. How would they know before these people came out and say, Oh, the new world. Like this is the old world of black folk, please. So Australia, the Aboriginal people that's there, which are people of African descent, black people you want to call them. They go through it. There was a recent video and I wish I could show this here, but I can't, but I'll just tell you the story. Maybe you've seen it on X. I think I, I think I retweeted it where you had these two, you know, black kids, they call them Ab Aboriginal, you know, you can call them the, 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 uh, native, native Australians, you know, that's what you should call them. Um, but they say the Aboriginal people of that land, the black people, they had two children, a, a, a little boy and a little girl. They supposedly was trespassing on the land with one of them folks. And this dude went got a pair of handcuffs and handcuffed two children. Like these children look like they couldn't have been no more than maybe five to seven. Excuse me. Hold on. Maybe five to seven. I want you to hear though, these people, and you know, after I start doing some research into Australia, I say, you know what? That's going to be on my list. I have to get um, eventually, I have to get an Aboriginal person from Australia to just, just cover that content out of Australia. What happens to them? Cause they don't have no representation either. So let, let me go on and get, get this here. Oh, off this one. Hi. Is the uh, lyricism here really that bad? Yes, it is. You're ruining this country, mate. You'd be wondering why would somebody who doesn't know me feel this way about me? As a black woman, I have to be so that I don't incite fear in them. Feels like you're outside a box and it feels like you should hate yourself. Dehumanizing because you can never change your skin. I'm in this beautiful circle. You can't be in it. They're also projecting out that you should be ashamed of yourself. I think it's probably one of the worst things for people to experience. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you heard, I mean, those, those testimonies, um, of what happens to, um, black people in Australia, no different than any now. So now why? So do you, do you understand why I put all around the world, the same song? Do you understand why I put that now? Have we noticed a pattern here? Have we noticed a cultural pattern? It is a anti-black racism is a cultural pattern because you can't be in Australia being this way. You can't be in European nations being this way. You, you in South Africa too. You'd be in the same way you in America, of course, doing the same thing. You're in Canada doing the same thing. 
Um, every, everywhere you go, even on vacation, you're doing the exact same thing to people outside yourself based on skin tone. So it's safe to say that, and like I said before, anti-black racism is part of the culture and culture is taught in the household. That's not taught in school. It's taught in the household. I told you most black people, no matter where we at, whether you're in Australia, if you're in Europe, any European nation, if you're in America, Canada, et cetera, our first encounter with anti-black racism is going to be uh, elementary school. That's going to be your first encounter because no one's born that way. No, it's make sure to be taught. You know how, like in our culture, we make sure to preserve our history or we make sure to hand down our cultural foods, our music, our stories, you know, things like that. We make sure to teach our next generation these cultural practices. Well, when it comes to the folks, they make sure to hand down their cultural practices as well. And those cultural practices is anti-black racism. Check this out. So even in America, in 2024, how can you have someone like a Charlie Kirk? He wasn't raised in the 1960s or 50s. He wasn't raised during the slavery times, but yet he has the same attitude than those people in the 1960s, 50s, slavery times, etc. How does he have the exact same attitude? How we how we get a Derek Shaven, right? How do how do we get that kind of guy? Or did we, you know, that cop that did this to George Floyd? How, how we get it? How we get a Michael Slager? How do we get those kind of people? Right? We get those people because they're handing down anti-black racism as a culture. Period. These black people are sitting on buses, whatever, minding their business, reading books, right? And yet you're bothering them. And now in this country, there's certain things they won't say because we have created a consequence for it. Cause listen, their society didn't create a consequence. You know, all of them losing a job, losing a business. Some of them getting sued. Some of them going to jail. We created that consequence. That's not their society. Say, you know what? Anti-black racism is wrong. So, you know, let's start canceling them. Listen, they feel that they don't have the power they used to because they can't go out and call you an anti-black slur and get away with it. Whether they get away with it by keeping their job or they get away with it by, you know, getting educated on why you should not be an anti-black uh, bigot, right? That's one of the biggest things that they don't like. And unfortunately, unfortunately in Australia, the brothers and sisters haven't really regulated as of yet. Now I saw some of you mentioned the British. Yes. The, those, uh, colonizers and invaders came from Britain. And if you know the story of Australia, Britain basically emptied their prisons and they sent them to Australia. So the worst of Britain came to Australia and you know what happened to the Tasmanians. Do, do you know that there is a, um, it's a lake. It, it's a lake over there or some sort of, uh, a, a, a pond or something They use the N word, you know, on there. Right, right in Australia. Oh yeah. Now there were people saying, Hey, this needs to be changed. And the, Hey, this is wrong. Why are you using that word? And do you know, they were so upset by that. Yeah. Some of y'all may know about that. If you know about Australia, you understand? And I've always been curious about, you know, Australia, especially the stories with what happens with, with a lot of people there. And as we see what's happening, a lot of anti-black racism. So, when we talk, when we talk about these issues and problems, people like Elon Musk will say, well, why don't we stop talking about it? If we keep talking about it, then, you know, it, it'll never go away. Well, this is the problem. People like Elon, where you come from South Africa, right? You an Afrikaner, right? You come from a lineage of oppressors in South Africa. 
I don't see, I'm still, I need to do some deep diving into him. How did that offer Connor come here and just amass all that money? I know his people had some, some access to a mine or something over there in South Africa, right? That they stole from black people. Cause everything those Afrikaners have, they stole, they didn't work for anything over there in South Africa. But if we just stop talking about it, that's kind of like if you get sick and you tell the doctor, well, don't talk about what's wrong. Don't talk about it. Don't tell me anything, right? Don't tell me how to fix it. Don't tell me, just don't talk about it. And, and you know what? If we don't, if we don't talk about it, then it goes away. It's like the pandemic. If that's the case, why do you say that about the pandemic? Well, just don't talk about it. And if you don't talk about it, it'll go away. No, you have to talk about it, figure out the problem, address it and go on. But see, you're talking about it. This is what happens when you talk about it. They feel convicted in their hearts because even if you know the scriptures, whether you believe in them or not, the Holy Spirit is in the earth to convict the world of sin and unrighteousness. That's one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit, right? So when you speak about the evil and injustice that they know they've done, this is the thing. They could lie, but their heart can't lie to them, right? They know what they do. Now, of course, the Bible teach about, you know, your conscience being seared, you know, like, like, you know, you sear something with a, with a, a brand and iron. In other words, you don't feel anything. So when they tell you statements like, well, I don't feel no white guilt. Basically what they're telling you is my conscience is seared. So I don't feel anything. I can do whatever. That's why they particularly telling you that. But at the same time, if you feel that way, why are you telling me you don't feel guilt? Actually, I think you still do feel some sort of guilt because yes, your guilt comes from your sin. And the reason why think about it, you notice how angry they get when they talk about reparations, you know, you notice that like they get angry when we talk about reparations, any kind of reparations, they get so angry. Why? Because they know they owe it. That's the thing. They know they owe it for one Two, They know what they done. Listen, I've been told this long time ago and I've seen it in my own eyes. The reason why even in this country, they prefer even black immigrants from the African continent, the Caribbean, or if they from Latin America is because they don't feel guilt with them because they here then particularly enslaved them slave at all, but they did that to us. Now fast forward to a place like Australia, that place is, you know, not that big of a country it, It's small. When you talk about that British flag, New Zealand, that's another area where the British came. Cause you know, the British had colonized the majority of the world at one point in time, even Hong Kong was uh, a British colony. I mean, the British was, was, was on some world domination for real, for real. But the Aboriginal people in that country, Australia, they're discriminated against constantly. They're called slurs and they own, you know, like I said, they have certain slurs for them. Um, they don't get the best jobs. They're living in poverty. Uh, they are jailed more than the folks over there. So it, it, it's safe to say that if you don't have a class of people who could fight against that, it's going to go unchecked. You know what I'm saying? And you can't let that go unchecked brothers and sisters globally who's dealing in these countries. Even if you are, citizens of these countries. It don't matter wh where you at. No, everyone has a God given right to be treated fairly. Everybody throughout the world. It don't matter about your religion. It don't matter about your color. It don't matter about anything, whether you're poor, rich, in between, homeless, it don't matter. You have a God given right to be treated fairly and you have a God given right to not allow somebody to oppress you. You have a God given right to not allow anyone to steal from you. You have a God given right to uh, say, Hey, you're not going to treat me that way. You're not going to do this for him and then treat me. No, 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 no. Like I tell people throughout the world, take the example of black America. 
we could have easily just like, oh, well, we slaves and that's our lot in life. What can we do is make the best of it. And there was some slaves that thought like that. But thank God we had many ancestors that say, man, I'm not trying to be no slave forever. Or I don't want my kids to be no slaves. Yeah, I'm, I may have to die. I just may have to. But you know what? I'm dying. I, I have nothing to lose anyway. So I'm dying for a cause. And there's many, many ancestors who have lost their life to give us what we have in America today. Whether they lost their life in the hand of folks or whether they lost their life in the hands of, 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 of black folks working for the folks. Malcolm X gave his life for black America so we can enjoy what we enjoy today. Martin Luther King, whether you agree with some things with Dr. King or not, he gave his life for black America. And at the end of, and the end of his life, he was trying to go get that check. You understand? There's many people that lost their life that their blood has been spilled into the ground and they have been buried and, and, and their fruit is they, the, the fruit is being bared even still to this day of what our brothers and sisters fought for. See brothers and sisters throughout the world, you can never think that, well, if I just stay out the way, well, maybe if I just, you know, let them do this or that, or I don't want to be too loud. I, I don't want to dress a certain way. Listen, I've learned a long time ago. It's nothing we can do. It's nothing. It's nothing. So don't even try. Don't even waste your time. And my thing is this, if I'm going to try to, to, to heal any kind of divide or something, I do it with my people. I do it with black folk. I do it with the diaspora. I'm not about to sit up here and worry about people who are not even part of my tribe. So now if you understand that there's nothing you can do, then now you can move accordingly. You say, okay, or say, look what they did to Haiti. Now Haiti, glad you brought them up, is in chaos. But do you know there's about 12, is it 12? 12 families who basically the elite of Haiti and none of, and none of them, at least from the pictures, none of them look like this. There's, there's a rich elite class in Haiti, even though you see all this chaos in Haiti. Well, I just saw some news that uh, the brother barbecue, they say that's trying to run things. Barbecue took over one of them private ports for one of their families and barbecue say, Hey, you, you want, you want your stuff to come through this private port. You need to go pay me a tariff. Now it's a new day. You're going to pay for your stuff to come through here now. Oh, barbecue saying it's a new day because you understand when we come to Haiti, that same prime minister they just had the one that resigned. Oh, he was a puppet. He, he was a puppet for, he was a Biden puppet. He, he, he wasn't for, for Haitians at all. And barbecue and them say, nah, you gotta go. You gotta go. And that dude, uh, uh, tuck his tail between his legs and ran. He left. He left. He said he resigned and all of that, you know, but yeah, barbecue, I got to get deep into that. Barbecue is out there taxing, taxing that elite class. And if he's starting to tax you, then eventually he might come see you. That's really what that is. He about to come see you eventually. Cause think about it. Haiti's in chaos. Where they get all the guns from? If we want to bring up Haiti, there's no gun manufacturing plants in Haiti at all. These dudes I seen in Haiti walking around with AKs with, 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 with 50 round clips. If y'all so poor, if they so poor, what, what all, where all them, where all the weaponry coming from them folks that's over there shipping it in probably through some of that private port, man. I hope barbecue go over there and get, and get, and get all that, get all the riches they got. I'm on shoot barbecue need, need, need to free Haiti. I, I'm cool with that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. It's like, look, it may take a barbecue. Cause look, if you want to talk about that barbecue may be no different than, um, uh, Captain Troy in, um, hold on. Not Niger, Burkina Faso. 
And then you had the other brother in Mali. And then you got the other brother in Niger. And then talking about Niger, they just told the United States, hey man, your drone base you got over here, hey, you need to go ahead and pack that up. Take that on out of Niger. We cool now. Nah. We, 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 don't, we don't want you here. See, you're starting to see more and more pockets of that starting to happen. So those three brothers in the African continent, and boy, they trying their best to get at them brothers. Now you got, they say barbecue. Oh, he's a gangster. He's a this, he's a that. He's a cannibal. And I'm like, huh? What? And I'm like, cause you, but you know, I always think about what Malcolm X said too. He said that love the people in our community that they're hating and demonizing and be careful of the person that they love. Because usually when they look, think about it, all the people that they really love, they're not for black empowerment. They're not for it. They're for tap dancing. So talking about brother barbecue. Yeah. I got to do a deep dive into brother barbecue too. I need to figure out what he got going on because they really don't like this dude. He didn't kind of, he didn't kind of turn some things up, but you know, the French didn't like, uh, uh, um, a Dessaline and all them either. Hey, if Chad in Senegal is next, if, 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 if Chad in Senegal is next, hey, well, we need to have democratic elections. Okay. Every time they have these so-called elections, you having observers from the international community. Why are you observing the elections? That's number one. Number two, Maybe democracy doesn't work for them. Maybe they need to run on a kingship. How many times black folks run around here talking about we were kings and queens. Well, a king is not a democracy. That's a royalty. And or even in the continent, say with well, the chief of the village. Well, that's not a democracy. That's one person rule and whatever they say, go. Maybe in the African continent that didn't work very well because if you think about it, their, their forms of government they have is, is the folks version of government. It's not really their traditional government. Oh, you say barbecue used to be the chief of police. I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. Okay. A person says if, if, if you don't fit in with Australia, you can always go back to Africa. No, uh, uh, if, if you don't like black folks, you can carry your half itself back to Britain. Remember they're the invaders, not the black folk. You better know your history. They are the rightful heirs of Australia, not them folks. They ran from their homeland or they shipped them all over there to Australia because the King didn't want them no more. Please. No, let me tell you something. I'm glad he, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. Don't let these people tell you you need to go back to North Africa. If you want to go to the continent and I love going, I, it's a beautiful place. I enjoy vi visiting my distant cousins. We have a great time. You know, eventually I want to buy me a, you know, have me like maybe a condo or something there where, where I can go back and forth and, and, and spend time there and anything else I need to do in the area of this platform, of course. Um, but America, we built America, um, Australia, that was a black land, all of it, just like North Central Island, black land, black folks don't have to go nowhere, please. They, if they choose to go back to the continent, okay, they can choose to. If they want to go back and forth, and some people say, I'm cool with going back and forth. Hey, I stay so many months here. I got me a condo over there. So I ain't got to worry about a house. I bought me a fly condo. Okay. You go to your condo and in the continent, if you want to chill, get with your people, man, you stay two, three months. If you want to stay the summer vacation, if you want, let's say if you're a teacher and you got a whole summer off, say, shoot, I got me a condo in South Africa. I'm going to stay my whole summer vacation in South Africa. I come back when the school year start. If you, let's say if you're a teacher and got that much time, right? Um, don't let nobody tell you where you got to live. You live where you want to live. If you built that land, if you built that land, 
These people don't have no right over that land more than you, whether it's Australia, whether it's America or anywhere else that we are at. They don't have no right over there. Now, if he want to have some rights, he can carry himself right back to the European continent, go back to Europe. And then I ain't got nothing to say about that at that point. I ain't got nothing to say, but you better, you better realize that that's not, that's not European land. That is African Aboriginal black land, Australia. And them, and them Aboriginal people need to, need to uh, claim they, they homeland and, and everything. And, 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 and be proud of their, uh, homeland and fight for their homeland. And now let me tell you something, uh, 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 black Australians, if you laser focused on ending any kind of oppression and you just laser focus and you, you get on code, which you gotta get on code. Okay. You gotta get on code and don't have a leader. Don't have a leader. Let the code be the leader. Okay. Because when you have a leader, then it's the strike, the, the strike, the shepherd and the sheep are scattered deal. So you don't want a leader because think about it with, with them, the folks, they don't have a leader. Think about it. They do not have a leader. They have a code. So it doesn't really, you can't say, well, get this one guy or this one lady and it's the end of it. No. See, we learned that from the 1960s. We had quote unquote leaders. This is why even in the United States, they keep saying, well, who's the black leaders? Well, this is your leader. Like, no, they're not our leaders. So we didn't anoint them. We don't need a leader. We just need it. We just need code. And, and look at us, Australians, the black ones. Look at us. We're laser focused even on reparations. Reparation used to be a eh, whatever. Now people are trying to be $5 black Americans now. It's, it's starting to get that far. You got people who are our distant cousins. Some of them trying to cosplay black Americans now taking down them foreign flags and all of that and say, Hey, you know, I got, I got a black American in my family. Uh, Hey, I traced it back. I got one. Why are people are starting to react like that? Because they say, wait a minute, hold on. Black Americans are too laser focused. And usually when we get laser focused, we get things done. We get things done. And so in order for you to get rid of that treatment that you have, you have to be laser focused and fight again. Let me tell you something. The anti-black racist, they're, they don't endure very long when we laser focus. We, we are very good at outlasting them. All you gotta do is stay laser focused. They're gonna try to psych you out. First, they're gonna try to ignore you. Okay. They're gonna try to ignore you, act like you're not saying anything. Then if ignoring you don't work, then they're gonna start complaining, lying, all that sort of thing they normally do. And then you just keep being laser focused, keep being laser focused. You know, you keep uh, doing everything you need to do to get whatever you guys need in Australia. Eventually they're gonna cave. They're gonna cave. Think about it. We come from slavery in America. Black Americans come from slavery. How you go from slavery to where we at today by being laser focused. And yes, some people going, going to have to, um, in this fight, some people, some people going to lose some things. It, it, it happened for us here. We didn't get anything. We did not get our freedom through the voting booth. No matter what these people, it, Boulay like to say, we didn't get no, nothing by no Democrat party. We got it on our own. So Australians, you have to get it on your own. South Africans, let me circle a you. you. You got a DA problem. You got a Phil Craig problem. That Brit, and, and I'm glad uh, Inga, shout out to Inga, covered that, you know, Inga out of Cape Town. You got a Phil Craig problem. And y'all been having a problem. We're over there in the Western Cape, Cape Town, all them little areas, y'all, y'all have an Orania problem. There's no way that y'all can go to a European country and have a so-called black town that no, um, none of them could get into. But do you know that Orania thing that was actually put in like their constitution? They can have that. Do you know that 
Now, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. I'm talking about those of y'all in government. Y'all need to amend y'all constitution a whole lot. This is just my opinion. I know he's like, oh, well, you're not South African. You're right. I'm not. But I'm just saying for, because I care, right? Because I'm a distant cousin. I just think y'all constitution need to be amended and get rid of that. Because I'm telling y'all, those people want to put y'all back in apartheid. Now they talk about trying to, they want to break off the Western Cape away from South Africa and create their own separate country. You don't have to create your own separate country. The Netherlands is right there. Like I've been to the Netherlands, it's not a bad country. I mean, I was passing through, you know, the airport and, and I got to talk to the people and all of that. I met some actually good African people there too. But from what I saw the outside the airport and some of the people I talked to in the Netherlands, they all seemed like they was cool people. I mean, I've seen amenities that were no different than I would see in America. So what, what's wrong with going to the Netherlands? But reality speaking, the Netherlands don't want them. I've been told that more than once by people from the Netherlands. I never forget that email that lady sent me that time from the Netherlands. Oh, she read, she read them for filth. And she said, look, I'm gonna tell you right now, we don't want them here. We don't want them. Matter of fact, nobody wants them. They are considered outcasts in the, in the European world. When they tried to go to New Zealand, even New Zealand didn't want them. They were saying, man, what's going on with these people? They, 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 they say, what's wrong with their racism? Like, cause I, we know that's going on in New Zealand, but the way they was doing it, they say, nah, you're doing too much. Cause you know, some of the, 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 the anti black racism with some of them, it's like this. We can be anti black, but just let's keep that on the low. Or let's just do that in nuance or let's be passive aggressive about it. Don't come out here just being rah, rah with it. Cause then now you're making us all look bad. We really don't want to look bad like that. We, yes, we talk about them when they're not around. Yes, we joke about them. Yes, we talk about Beyonce and, and we don't like her new country album, even though we jamming it though. We know every song to it. But don't be out, out loud with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? That's really what, what they problem with them. So, because I'll tell you, I'll never forget that first time I went to Cape Town. Never forget that. I got to Cape Town, I'm like, where am I at? You know, because I, Joe Berg, man, it was like black excellence out there, man. Black people successful, black people moving and shaking out there in Joe Berg, man, going out there with the brothers and sisters Soweto and, 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 and all the different places I've seen through there, just, just happy with the people. And then I get out there to Cape Town and I'm looking, I say, first of all, I had to see like, what's the demographics of this place? I mean, the folks were everywhere. And I'm, I had to go on my phone. Cause I am like, wait a minute, am I, am I in Massachusetts or something? In this area, at least where I'm at, you know? And so I had to look and see, okay, they have 15% of, of Cape Town's population, but they still had more black people there and colored people there, right? But, and I'm gonna tell you something else that bothered me when I went to Cape Town. When the one sister, shout out to uh, Tiani, Tiwani, I think I say Tiwani. He said, hey, let's go to this restaurant over here. This is a black owned restaurant. And I'm like, what did you just say to me? It's a black owned restaurant. Oh, that bothered me. I never forget that, that bothered me. Now the food was awesome. Don't get me wrong, oh my God, the food was awesome. We even went back to that restaurant when, um, when I took my family the, the, the last time. Uh, great food. They put on a great show. I mean, it was good. It was, man, it was, it was a good situation. Oh, I love that, that restaurant. They put on a good show, but, um, yeah, I, I didn't, I, I, I didn't like, that's why I say brothers and sisters of South Africa, y'all got to get a hold of that. That's your land. That is your land. Them, them, mm -mm, that's your land, man. You say, okay. K says some of those foods would overseas would try you but being FBA in America pretty much prepares you for all those busters. They do come though. Okay. I have not been tried by any of them, but let me tell you what I do to everybody when I'm overseas. I quickly speak because let's keep it real. In some instances, they may think you are African. Well, of course we're African descent. 
but they may think you from an African country and then you quickly speak to them. But they also look at you because you don't look African. What I mean by that, we dress different. Some of our features are different. Some of them are. Some of our features are completely different. Um, we just move different. We have a different, we have a different swag about it. So people like start looking at us and be like trying to figure us out. And I think I'm in one time at the airport in Johannesburg, they had a, uh, one, one of the Afrikaners there and he was getting his bags or whatever. I said, okay, I'm waiting to get mine. And he, he looked at me and he said, he said, you South African? And I looked dead at him and said, nope, I'm a black American. That's the first thing I told him. He said, oh, oh, you, oh, you from America. Oh, well, how, 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 how you doing? And he's a start, start want to talk when he heard I, I was American. But I, 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 I tell people in a minute, I'm a black American. I have no problem saying I'm a black American. I am a black American. No, I'm not saying that I think it's bad to be called a South African. No, I'm not saying that. Um, when I went to the airport that one time, you know, the one sister started speaking to me and the one sister started speaking to me in Zulu and you know, and the dude said, no, 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 he, he's not, he's not from here. I said, Oh, I thought he was from here. So, you know, yes, we do blend in, in a lot of instances, but like I said, opening your mouth gets you a world of anybody who's traveled know that just open your mouth. That's all you got to do. Open your mouth. But at the same time, I'm not going to watch you disrespect an, uh, uh, one of my distant cousins not in front of me. That's not about to happen because I'm gonna have to check you. But you, but we, our reputation, though, understand, you say FBA, right? Our reputation is known worldwide. It's known. People, people respect, people respect us. I'm telling you, I've gotten more respect in every country I've traveled to. I'm telling you, even, even, let me see, Ethiopia, Kenya, South Africa, uh, uh, Turkey, Costa Rica, been to Mexico, all the different places I've been you know, and, and several others, it's been nothing but respect. And everybody asking questions about our, our history sometime, you know, want to know about, hey, is that really happened like that? And and they interested in hearing our, our, our story. So yeah, it, it's, it's been nothing but respect, you know, at least from, from, my, from my experience. Well, CF, you say you're not Flint, you're not feeling South Africa. Well, I can't say that because Johannesburg, man, I love Johannesburg, man. Johannesburg to me, you know, is, 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 man, it's, it's, it's a good city. Now when we go on the trip, we're going to go to Durban also. I've never been to Durban. So it'd be my first time going to Durban. I know I got to go to Limpopo eventually, uh, Emma Palanga eventually all that places. And I will get there eventually. Um, but nah, I, I, I was cool. I, I was cool. I had no problems with nobody. You say it's the same way in Bolivia. Man, yeah, we, we get respect, man. We get nothing but respect. And when I went to Costa Rica, especially when I started talking to the brother, to, to the brothers and sisters out there in Costa Rica, cause you know, we got brothers and sisters out there. You know, and we just chopping it up and we talking like we've been knowing each other forever, you know? So, cause you know, we got a lot of brothers and sisters in Latin America and they be want to talk to us, see how it is, you know? So, you know, some of y'all go out there constantly. Well, I mean, you say, just say, is it you or the American dollar they respect? Um, I would say I've never paid nobody. So how does a dollar give me respect? No, my lineage gives me respect. The way I carry myself gives me respect, not a dollar. Cause I, all the people I'm telling you about, I never gave a dime. Oh, you referring to people that maybe, and then let's talk about that. When people drive for us, like they drive all day, we make sure to feed them. We make sure to tip them. Right. And I make sure to tip them real good. Right. In, in their, in their currency. That's why I make sure I change money. I give them, you know, some money in their currency. So the American dollar, yeah, it goes a lot further. Yeah. Um, would more people maybe be willing to do more for you? Cause they thinking maybe you give me some of those, those good American dollars that you cashed in an hour, hour thing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm telling you what I've been told in my face by brothers and sisters over there. 
about how they respect, you know, what we have done. They respect our fight. And, and I've been told several times, man, we, we would love to have more of y'all here. Look, I'm gonna tell you what happened in South Africa. So, you know, they got the, the immigration issues in South Africa. <laughs> I, had, I had a few of them say, look, can y'all come over here? And can, can we, can we like deport the, the, the Nigerians and all these other people? They have a thing about the Nigerians and I, I, and, and the issue about the Nigerians, not all Nigerians, but some of the Nigerians are coming to South Africa and they trapping, they scamming, you know, they pimping, they doing all kinds of things out there. I'm talking about some of them, not all. So a lot of those brothers got an issue and sisters got an issue with it because everybody basically is flooding South Africa. It's kind of like our country, right? Everybody's flooding America. And you know how we feel about it? Like we talking about the migrant crisis where brothers and sisters over there are talking about, hey man, you need to go back to your homeland, go fix your issue and problem over there, go make your country great. Why everybody got to come over here? And then what happens over there, the same thing, you remember that video with that migrant, that Venezuelan migrant told that black woman, you lazy, you lazy, you not go, no, no more money for you in Chicago. I don't know if you remember that video. Well, in, in South Africa, the same thing happens to South Africans. Same thing. Now, if you want somebody to talk about that issue, Renelway is the one that you need to ask that question to. Boy, Renelway be going in about that junk. Oh boy. Yeah, she, she goes off about that. She's like, how you come to, you know, like how they come to my country and call me lazy? They had, they had to come here and calling us lazy. It's like, like what? You know, so I, I don't get why people try to call other people lazy. Like, how is lazy a diss to me, though? That's how I keep trying to figure that out. How is lazy a diss? If anything, you're lazy. You ran from your place to come up here. Why didn't you work hard where you were from? You, 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 you worked so hard to get over here. That's what you did instead of working hard where you was at. You work hard to get over here. And do y'all know? In this, in this instance, Mexico and Venezuela has been saying that if, if, if Texas or anybody deports them, they're not taking them back. Basically telling America, you stuck with them. We ain't taking them. Boy, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Well, yeah, yeah. Research the history into like, it's, it's a, look, let me tell y'all. What them, what them people from Britain would do to the indigenous uh, 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 black folks from Australia, they used to play this game where they would sit up here and bury the children. The children, not but not fully bury them, but have their, their this is, look it up, their heads would be, like they say this the ground, their heads would be exposed to babies. These, these people would sit up here and literally tried to, and they had, they would keep kicking the children until they sever their heads. This is the things that these people, listen, if you research the history of these people, this is why they don't want to talk about their history. This is why they want to hide their history. Just look, look into the research, look into it. They can't, they can't deny what they have done in Australia or, or anywhere throughout the world. They can't deny it. Well, dark swore 67. The reason the North Central Island never been invaded. I'm going to repeat that again. North Central Island has never been invaded. I wonder what they're doing right. And every one of us is doing wrong. With that being said, thank you ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the, uh, uh, uh live stream t tonight. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's your first time here. We just have these conversations and yes, the live streams were requested by the people. So I said, I have to give the people what they want within reason. So yes, we we're doing the live stream 7 PM central standard time, uh, Monday through Friday. If I don't do a stream Monday through Friday is usually something cause I, something happened, you know, maybe that one day, but I'll try to schedule my things ahead of time. Um, so make sure you subscribe and, and, and come back tomorrow, 7 PM central standard time right here 
on the African Diaspora News Channel. Make sure you click that like button. That's also very, very important. Get educated in the history of Australia. We need to be educated on every area the folks went, just so when they do talk to us, you can have a global perspective on what they've actually have done. Even though I want you to be educated in American history and know our history, but know world history, know that. Because the world history we learned was very minuscule and it was you know, pro the folks and not really uh, truth, understand? Uh, also, you downloaded the African Diaspora News Channel app. Thank you very much for that. We greatly appreciate that um, as well. Um, if you're going to download it, you say, hey, I just want to download it to support the show. Uh, make sure you get a monthly, quarterly, or yearly. Yearly is better that way you sit it and forget it. Um, also, if you're at work, you can be watch it on your, your computer. AfricanDiasforNews.org is all attached, it's all the same. Uh, you, you, your app login works just like on there. So thank y'all for listening and we will see you on the next one. Make sure you join us on the podcast tonight, 10 PM central standard time. Um, as we will uh, get into, you know, more relevance about, you know, black Americans and how they're constantly, uh, walking away from the Democrat party and the legacy media has to now concede that. So make sure you check that out tonight.